All right, so shall we just begin by sitting quietly for a few minutes and quieting, I'm quiet already because I had a nice birthday, but just uh, closing our eyes and settling our minds and, and just taking a deep breath in and out letting go of all the busyness of the week, allowing yourself to relax. Allowing yourself to drop the things that you had to do, everything that had to be finished, Putting that aside for now. And allowing your whole body and mind to not have anything to do. Feeling your body relax. Allowing your body to relax. Allowing your mind to unwind. Allowing yourself to breathe. Okay, so bringing your mind back to this moment, allowing it to be open, curious, and receptive to listening and understanding the word of the Buddha. So when you're ready, you can slowly open your eyes.
A. So we are on page 188 for those who um, weren't here last week of the book Social and Communal Harmony, which I think everybody knows. And we're beginning at number three, the wheel turning monarch. So this section, these sections actually are essentially about um, karma, I feel, and what causes good results, what conditions bring up good results in community for an individual, but in this case, for a whole country. So the section is called the wheel turning monarch. And I'll begin by just reading the paragraph. And after that, we can, we can uh, talk about it. The Blessed One said, Monastics, even a wheel-turning monarch, a just and righteous king, does not govern him his govern his or her realm without a co-regent. A certain monastic asked, but who, Bhante, is the co-regent of the wheel-turning monarch, the just and righteous king? It is the Dhamma, the law of righteousness, replied the Blessed One. The wheel-turning monarch, the just and righteous king, relying on the Dhamma, honoring the Dhamma, esteeming and respecting it, with the Dhamma as his standard, banner and sovereign, provides lawful protection, shelter, and safety for his own dependents. He provides lawful protection, shelter, and safety for the khatiyas attending on him, for his army, for the brahmins and householders, for the inhabitants of towns and countryside, for ascetics and brahmins, for the beasts and birds. A wheel-turning monarch, a just and righteous king, who thus provides lawful protection, shelter and safety for, war, for all, is the one who rules by the Dhamma only. And that rule cannot be overthrown by any hostile human beings. I'll read that last little bit. A wheel-turning monarch, a just and righteous king, who thus provides lawful protection, sh shelter, and safety for all, is the one who rules by Dhamma only, and that rule cannot be overthrown by any hostile human being. So uh, I don't know about you, but when I read when I read this paragraph, my mind goes. Like that's what makes sense, you know. Some when we listen to the news, we wonder why are people fighting each other? Why are bombs being thrown on one one country to another? What is what makes the world so wrong? You know what what what's going wrong? What's happening with people? But um, when I read this verse, I go, 
now I understand because there's only one thing that works. It is living by the Dhamma. And when you don't live by the Dhamma in its minutest detail, being harmless you, and genuinely protecting the people who are under you, keeping your precepts, not lying, not, not stealing, then the country functions. And when rulers, when kings don't follow those precepts, don't follow those um, codes of, well, conduct and, and truthfulness, then naturally there will be a breakdown of society. So for me, it's, a, it's like the light bulb going off. That's why, that's what's going on in the world. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's just a, my own reflection. Um, I can, the, the next sutta is similar, but we'll just stop there because so much of our um, news and our minds are filled with the horrors of monarchs leaders just ruining the lives of their people and the, their their neighboring countries so it's very hard for us to process when you hear this on the news you know what's going wrong how can i stop it how can i understand understand um this world around me so um yeah for for me this 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 helps my mind to kind of be clear about what is right, what is wrong, what is, uh, how do I understand the, what is happening in the world right now? So if uh, you're welcome to, to um, add to that, because all of us watch the news. Well, some of us don't watch the news that much, but it's just somehow, you know, affects us. Yes, Lee. Lee, may I ask you to unmute, please? Thank you. Thank you. It hasn't, thank you for, for that, Venerable. I think that's really helpful. It has a slightly different meaning for me when mm -hmm. I listen to that, because I think we're in samsara. So when I think of the wheel turning monarch and the protection of it and the Dharma, I think more, say, of the simile of the saw. So if you, and I don't practice particularly well, right? I'm not going to fib. I'm not a wonderful Dharma practitioner, but I'm a practicing person. So what I'm aware of is some people, if you do follow the Dharma, and I'm assuming, and I do have faith in the Buddhas or confidence in the Buddha's teaching, then that's what the protection would be, like the simile of the soul, because you could enter those states of compassion, the the Brahmas, um, the Brahmas, you know, the four states. Or so for me, so mm. me, I can't expect the world to have monarchs or leaders that will ever be virtuous or just, because I'm in samsara. So mm. for me, like the wheel turning monarch and the offering of the Dharma is if you follow it, then perhaps if you follow it well in this life and other lives, then that's the protection that you get from following following it, if you see what I mean. Whereas the other way, I feel as a being, I can't ever, ex but I mean, I completely agree that the reason we're having problems is people aren't following those mm -hmm. harmless practices. On the other hand, they're not going to, I don't think, yeah. I don't, you know, that's what I think. Sorry, but I was, was you know, I was thinking. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's true. But somehow you feel society is broken, you know, some countries are more broken than it needs to be. No, I think it's always like this, because when you look at history, like the Hittites and, you know, just every country. I just think that's samsara and it's been going on through like each eon and it's just going on. Or even if you're in the other, like the Asura realms or so on, or in the hell realms, it's just what we're in. 
And it would be lovely to have like a, a shoker or one of these wonderful kings, but even that would be temporary. So I think that the passage must be for me, as for my reading, when I hear it, the real turning monarch and the Dharma following it, the protection must be something like if you practice really well, and I can't practice this well, <laughs> you know, like the simile of the saw, that person experiencing in the simile of the saw are the people who are like tearing him from limb to limb. That being who's developed that level of practice is protected from the harm because they've really cultivated a mind following the Dharma. So I don't. It's, it's quite lovely to be able to talk and actually sort of think about this and, and actually almost sort of disagree, but not quite. It's quite beautiful for me, actually, as a person to experience this. But I do agree that the, the monarchs and the leaders and the world is broken, but I think that's what samsara is and that's what this human realm is. I do. Yes. Well, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it's more, it's more, it's more being enlightened would be great. And not coming back might be great or going into, but not that I've got that. I haven't got that. See, I'm speaking about it, but I haven't got the level of practice of what my brain is able to sort of model in one way. You know, I can't say that I'm saying these things and I can suddenly go this evening, I'll just go and sit and enter a jarnic state or something. I'm not going to fib, you know. But I am, but my view philosophically is that it might mean that, you know, for me. And I think that's quite nice, you know, that's quite nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yes. Liz, you ha had. Uh, yeah. Liz, may I ask you to unmute, please? Yes. Thank you. Um, see me when I see that, and you say the, the world is broken, I agree with you. But you see, speaking about the leaders, like if they were parachuted on us, they are not. In the East, in the West, we are, uh, well, democracies. So, mm. in fact, the leaders reflect the people, mm. reflect the people they represent. Oh dear. And and what example do we give to children and to other people? It's okay to lie. I mean, not naming anybody, but Boris Johnson, if he breathes, he lies. Um and and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Lying this last, I would say this last 10 years has become not shameful. Uh what are we showing our kids? Mm -hmm. It's okay to lie because mm -hmm. what people do, these kids are watching the news with mm -hmm. their parents or hearing about it. And now you don't use the word lie. You say, speaking on truth. You mm -hmm. what? You what? No, this is lying. And we, we kind of cover a bit like in Victorian time where they put things to hide the feet of the table we're putting kind of a nice gloss on things which shouldn't be accepted but we all participate in that we all mm -hmm. accept that and that is a very dangerous thing to do because we are not facing yes uh, this leader is lying. Yes, this leader gets drunk. Yes, uh, and so on. But he represents us. We are not the theme of the leaders. No. We are, we've put oh, them in yeah. where they are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I wonder what percentage of English people go out to vote? Like in in us in us in America, only forty percent turn out to vote, and they're the ones who elect Donald Trump. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, so. I, I don't know the percentage yes, in, but... in in France. When when I, I was in um, when I was a teacher in the UK, I used to tell my students to go and vote. I used to say, you know, it's very important. I couldn't vote in the UK because I'm not a UK citizen. Mm. But I used to tell them, and then came Brexit, and they said, but it's terrible, Liz, it's terrible. And I said, did you get yourself out of bed to vote? Mm. No, don't complain. Mm. And uh, they weren't happy about that. I said, I told you, you know, things don't happen to you. 
you have mm. a, a responsibility in what happens around you. Right, right. Yeah, thank you. That, that sounds tough, but as I say, these leaders, we put them in place. Mm. Mm. Yeah. There is no leaders parachuting from the sky. Well, I've never seen any, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be quite funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, it reminds me of a picture of Boris Johnson suspending, you know, it was just before the Olympic Games. But <laughs> yes. yeah, we can't we can't excuse ourselves or not look reality in the yeah. face. Say, well, you know, yeah. with leaders like us, mm. no, 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 we've put them there. Oh, gosh. Okay, Shirley. Shirley, <laughs> may I ask you to unmute, please? Ah. Yeah, I agree with Lee in part that Sarsara is a pretty dangerous and horrible place uh, with really bad things happening to a lot of people people most of the time if we look at history and ultimately our only protection is the Dharma and our own virtue and our own loving kindness and then you know people can't touch us ultimately if even if we're being sawed up we can still ideally but I mean I mean I'm not going to be able to do that but I think I can actually take refuge in me I mean I'm not amazingly good but uh, <laughs> I can at least you know, I can at least um, take refuge in my aspirations. Mm. But I think um, there have been caring societies. I think I grew up in a caring society. Um, I don't want to get party political. Um, it, but, you know, there was a welfare state. I had a free education mm. and a free health service. Uh, and there was a safety net that, you know, people were protected by vulnerable people were protected, and I think that isn't happening so much now. Mm. I mean, this is my this is my view, and this is my perception. Um, I think, mm. um, and you know, I was horrified this morning that an announcement was made that they're going to go and look for uh, that we're going to give permission for oil and gas companies to seek. Um, fossil fuels in the North Sea in areas that were earmarked for wind farms. I think that's going to, that's my belief that that will cause. Why is, why are they doing that? Are they doing that because they want to protect people or are they doing that because their money is invested in fossil fuel companies? I didn't want to get political, mm. sorry. <laughs> um, but I think, um, and I think it was ever thus, the rich and the powerful have always exploited the weak and the poor. And I'm not quite sure I agree with Liz. I usually agree with Liz. Uh, but I don't think people always put... The, people are manipulated, I think, by the press and the powerful people. Um, I think there's a lot of manipulation going on and a lot of lies going on. Uh, so I think we have to be very, very careful, wise, uh, and I think a lot of vulnerable people. You know, there's a lot of populist mm. um, politicians around. Uh, in you know, not so much here, um, but certainly you know, in 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 certain countries, which sort of. Yeah, I mean, they sort of play on people's fears and on division to get power. Um, and people like, you know, people, anyway, I, you know, it's, so I think we've got to be very careful. Right. We've also got to really try and, yeah, I don't know. I, it's an election day today and I'm a bit, wow. I, I'm a bit fired up and I was, <laughs> I've been campaigning for one particular party and uh, I, it's, <laughs> it's because I think that they will, bring a, a sort of do something about the climate basically which I think is going affecting a lot of people sorry to bring all I didn't mean all this to come out <laughs> <laughs> probably it's in everybody's mind if they've been out voting but um 
you know, how do you do that and stay? I mean, what I did actually when I put the leaflets through the door, I tried to think to myself, may you be, may you be, um, May you always have enough to eat. May you always be safe. Mm. And so I try to sort of say, look, this is coming from this space that I wish this for all beings. But then I get sort of right. carried away by views and opinions. So anyway, I'll stop talking now. Okay, but it, no, no, but no. I think I think yes, it it, it it I think it's quite. I think I I agree with you. If we've got a ruler or a government or a ruler that at least for some modicum, wants to care and protect its people rather than line its pocket, then we're going to have a happier society. Uh, and I think you know, the Buddha was actually saying that in this sutta. Yes, he was talking yes, about, yes. you know, it was the ruler's duty to protect and care for the people. Uh, and some people have, some some rulers and governments have done that better than others. Mm. I won't say any more. <laughs> Thank you. I have to add, you know, we think we have no effect. We're putting pamphlets through the door and what can we do? But every little drop has some effect and maybe it changes. It brings one extra vote. You know, we have to be, yeah, we have to um, remember the, the, the one, the little bit that we did to help rather than the mountain that we didn't climb over. Something, you, we might have helped one person's life somehow. So, yeah, to remember the, that we are actually helping someone in some small way, with the way, at least the way that we live. Yes. Okay, Sean. John, may I ask you to download, please? Hello. Happy birthday, Venerable. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't realise you. I, uh, I was thought you were even younger. Oh. <laughs> um, I've had a good life. Yes. <laughs> a first of all, just a quick question. What does it mean by wheel-turning monarch? What's the wheel-turning mean? Ah, right. It is a kind of a mythical, uh, I think it was in the time of the Buddha, there was this idea of the perfect ruler. The wheel turn, turning monarch is the um, um, kind of what, who, the, the ideal king, the I, ideal ruler. And there are like nine qualities. One of them is that this, he has this wheel. I can't remember the exact story behind it, but he finds this wheel and it's one of his treasures and it must be something that was in the uh, uh, culture at that time, this mythical wheel turning monarch. And he was the perfect leader and the Buddha is describing his version of who the perfect leader is. Okay. So okay, that's that, a wheel turning that makes, monarch. Thank yeah. you. That's helpful. And, yeah, just sort of leading. I mean, first of all, my initial reaction was maybe a bit more like yours, like, oh, oh well, it's actually just like, oh, that's a bit of a relief that mm -hmm. that actually there is just one thing, and it's quite simple in some regards, you know, in terms of you can break it down to some quite simple steps. Not saying it's easy to be perfect, to them, but um, that was my initial reaction. Now, what this then following on from other people's comments, I mean, I won't go too far into politics, but one thing I would say is we are constantly fed this idea that things are terrible. And mm -hmm. in reality, I'm not quite sure that's true because, you know, in 1880, the av people's life expectancy was 40. Um, standard of wow. living. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not that long ago. Right. So wow. people have this idea that, things are really bad and yes there's a lot of suffering we all know that mm. um we all suffer i can talk from personal experience in certain ways but mm. the other thing is the you know and with politics and whatever else is information is abundant you know we didn't have we didn't know this we didn't know politicians were lying to us but they were <laughs> My, mm. i don't think if anything it's just that there's a lot more transparent in some ways maybe they're even better now 
I am t- totally personally disillusioned with politics. And for the first time ever, I didn't vote yesterday. I actually even forgot because I don't listen to the news um, to vote, which I feel a little bit bad about. But then again, I'm not sure because I probably would have spoiled my ballot paper because <laughs> I don't like any of them, to be honest. So, but what I would say is surely the whole point in all of this, including this sutta, and as Ajahn Charles said, you know, 95% of this is you and internally. And so when rather than looking on the outside, we can't control all of that to much degree. We can only control ourselves and how we feel about it. And if we follow the Dharma and we, we do what we can, you know, and, and if you're if people think, oh, well, this is just, you know, everything is samsara, would that would that mean that no one in this world could be enlightened? yeah yeah so that that i mean that's my question i mean if if you believe in enlightenment supposedly there could be people that we may know that could be enlightened so maybe it's just that we need to refocus is this is kind of like an open question and a thought not not a judgment do we need to refocus on ourselves because we get sucked into this popularist thing and politicians and politics and media and it wants us to have feelings to react emotionally and actually do we just want to follow the dharma and that lead to more happiness and better behavior then yeah. I decide, decide. Yeah. thank you <laughs> minori uh Thank you. It was such a wonderful discussion from Lee to Shirley to Sean to um, everybody. Um, so I thought um, I just add a couple of things. Um, I think yes, when the society is corrupted, the leader who comes, you know, from that society is pr- probably the same kind of a person. But I think when the society is already now corrupted. There has to be a powerful leader coming in to change it. So it's very hard for people to kind of change it from the bottom. So they need to create a leader who change it. Um, And I'm not thinking about countries. One country can't do it anymore, isn't it? We are kind of a global. It has to be some powerful leader. But I was thinking, yes, it won't happen in our lifetimes and maybe because the samsara is imp- impermanent and things keep on changing and changing. Maybe once in a while, one of those wheel turning monarchs come on and off as well and uh, and then they disappear for another year, maybe. <laughs> Just a thought. Thank you. Maybe not in, maybe not in this lifetime. Uh, G. G, may I ask a download, please? Uh, just uh, related, but not exactly directly uh, on topic. Um, I, I also notice I have this thing of um, wanting to do a lot more, kind of like you notice how much suffering there is somewhere. And you, you know, you help a little bit and you just have this feeling of I've helped a little bit, but um, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't quite look like it's done much to improve the situation. Uh, so uh, almost some sense of like, um, not wanting to fix things, but some sense of uh, not yeah not seeing how a little bit is really impacting too much and that's also one of my habits you know I, I look at things I might help somebody a little bit and I look at things and I think oh I'm not really sure if that's done much at all um, and that's uh, still you know it's improved over the years but it's still an ongoing thing for me uh, so I, I just wondered if you have any words of advice for you know when you catch yourself thinking like this or having emotions like this like you know I'm helping but is it really doing anything is it really not is it really going far at all I really like what uh, Venable Chanda said the other day I, I'm sure if you weren't here 
were here, but remember the one person you have helped. The the one thing, the thing that you have done good, rather than the nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine people that hasn't haven't been helped. So, yeah, we tend to we tend to have um, this idea that the whole world has to change to be happy or we have to change the whole world to be happy. But um, yeah, just, just, just the one person you helped that day. Is that helpful? Oh, she's trying to say stuff. Okay, there you go. Like, as for example, also, I mean, same thing when I was younger, I didn't vote much at all uh, because, you know, it's like it's one vote, you know, there was a sense of, you know, it's one vote. It's not, I can't see how it's really changing the grand scheme of things at all. And uh, you vote this year and it's the same result. So next year you think, <laughs> why bother? Yeah. Because they're one vote, you can't actually see how it's helping even one person. Yeah. And in the end, democracy doesn't seem to be working either in, in countries. So, ah. as monastics, we don't even vote, interestingly enough. We stay impartial. I wonder if that's, that's a wise move. Just don't vote. Okay, I'm not advising that. Uh, but just uh, how to, I guess, uh, I, I just often wonder how to really uh, respect the little bit, you know, how to see the goodness in, in doing a little bit, even if it's just touching the fault, because, uh, yeah, it's hard to see it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Does anyone else have an answer? Or? I do. I think you told the answer yourself, Venerable, in a way that uh, one, that you look into yourself inwardly, then outwardly, and then see what has happened. And then you were talking about Ajahn Chah and saying that 95% of the things are internal. So we can't, we can't right, change the right. grand thing yeah. of Everything, I suppose, as Lee said, I mean, you know, the sun, we are in the samsara. And uh, I suppose, uh, as as you, you were telling to Shirley, that one little thing that we do, good good that we do, uh, we kind of rejoice on it and, uh, mm -hmm. um, and be grateful that we mm -hmm. are able to do that. And about the vote, and uh, one thing that I kept on telling my daughter as well, like, you know, she also forgot she, uh, or, or ignored, and that, that, you know, it's just one vote, but then that you don't want some other cohort to decide on your your behalf of what is happening like then things like um you know uh, different things that you want will happen in the world so it's like an ant colony isn't it one ant doesn't matter much but so many ants will you know do the change and the base colony so that is the way i think right, right. very complex you can argue yeah. the both ways yeah reka you had Eka, may, may I ask you to unmute, please? Yeah, so I'm not sure if I'm adding um, anything really new or if this is sort of um, kind of what was said earlier as well. Um, but I think Kamma is so complex. Mm -mm. I don't think it's really worth trying to look at the results in a sort no. of external True. world. Or material way um and i think the most important thing is that in the first place you're cultivating your own mind and mm -hmm. your own um ability to be like your own habit mental and emotional habit 
to be generous and to do good. Mm -hmm. And so if nothing else, at the very least, you are doing good to yourself by trying to help other, others mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for me, even though we may not be able to see direct results mm -hmm. a lot of times, um, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's one of the most important things. And then also another thing that just came to mind is that it's really important not to uh, try to help people from a place of ignorance. Mm -hmm. So I don't assume that most people here would do that. But sometimes, even when we think we are doing something for mm -hmm. the right reasons, or we are we are trying to help someone with a genuine heart. Um, Sometimes, you know, we won't realize that it's actually from a bit of an ignorant place. And, you know, best case scenario, we might realize later on and then we can reflect on that and not repeat the same mistake. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that's maybe also something that's important to take a pause and think about before we try mm -hmm. to help in some way. True. There's probably a degree of ignorance in everything we do, but at least to know we're ignorant. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Christine. Uh, Christine, can I ask you to unmute, please? Okay, so uh, circling back to what Lee said at the beginning, which might have seemed a little bit negative. But I feel there is a bit of truth in that. And I think there is a part in the sutta where even the Buddha, when he was talking about politics or the attitude of politics, uh, there's a sort of sweeping statement in the tone. I'm not an expert on the suttas. And in fact, I don't recall which in which location was that. Uh, but I was following a workshop online by John Brahmali, and he said that According to the Buddha and that sutta, most politicians just end up um, not being righteous in, in, in certain situations. It's sort of inherent to being a politician. Oh. And in a way, yeah, to what we were saying also earlier, you know, being a politician is really, really difficult. I wouldn't want to be in their pants for a single moment, because if you're trying to help one section of society, and another part of society will end up suffering consequences. However, this doesn't mean that a politician shouldn't strive to seek wisdom and compassion in their decisions. And in fact, we did mention that there are some, some societies that, uh, are, that mm -hmm. are an example to that. Mm -hmm. uh, I was reading somewhere about Singapore being one of the happiest places in the world. Singapore, and okay. I think, I, think it was, I think it was Singapore. Um, and when they were, Inter, uh, interviewing some of the politicians, they mentioned how important it is to have this bottom, uh, sorry, up, down, appro up, bottom approach, I think. And that they should have the welfare of the people first and foremost. And then only then will you have things like um, construction geared towards the people and having enough green areas, you know, rather than, unfortunately, as I, um, I'm seeing in my own country, we have over construction, over development, uh, they are not thought out well. And then um, a building collapses and people die, or you have sometimes developers who are kicking people out of their homes because they want to build bigger edifices so that they could gain more money out of rent, so on and so forth. So yeah, however, having said all of this, I I feel like Sean said that you venerable. There is a shift in in consciousness in the collective consciousness, and what we feel inside is always projected outside. 
and I feel this this is going on. It's very, 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 very gradual. And sometimes we might think that it's not happening at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel there is a shift in the consciousness and this is being felt also on the leadership um, in countries. Right, right. Yes, we probably don't realize how um, powerful thoughts are. We don't see our effect, the effect of our um, the mental world, but I'm sure there is there is there is collective consciousness, like you said. When we change ourselves, we somehow change the world. Liz. Liz, may I ask it on boot? Uh, yes, what you say about politicians now, since the age of 13 years old, I've been an activist against poverty, against racism, against this kind of thing. And um, I used to be on barricades and <laughs> marches in London, in New Zealand, you know, I was there. But um, I also, and that was more important, worked with charities for homeless people, um, and I worked in the Gambia and so on. And I still do work for a charity for people who haven't got enough to eat, and uh, I do that four days a week. And to me, I think um, changing society, yes, you've got to vote and you've got to really be very mindful and vigilant about what is offered. But as well, the action is not necessarily in on the barricades or in marches, although they are important because it sensitizes people to 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 whatever issue is being um, uh, marched about. Um, but I think uh, maybe I'm wrong, uh, but. What I see, you know, I make tea and coffee and so on for people as they come in. And uh, the change I see in these people, because they've got something to eat, because they are in a gentle and caring uh, environment for one morning a week, is, um, is more powerful than the marches. Both are necessary. But what I see oh. in front of my eyes is that they, they share, they, they smile, uh, they have a safe place to be okay. for the time they want to be there. And uh, I think it's, um, it's very important. I think you can't have one without the other. If you do one without the other, you, you are just... I was going to say as bad. Uh, let's say as blind as politicians. And that's only my opinion. I'm not imposing it on anybody else, you know, but uh, yeah, my experience. So I will carry on making tea, coffee, and hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, sitting down at the table, mm -hmm. talking, and sometimes I think, the Buddha didn't recommend idle chatter, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the first step before you can, you know, talk. And, and people feel safe, you know, so that's nice. Mm. Yes. 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 It's that loving kindness that uh, yes. opens yeah. people's hearts. Yeah, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Shall we read another section? We read another section. <laughs> All right. How a wheel turning monarch conquers. Here, when a head anointed noble king has bathed his head on the opposite the day of the 15th, and has ascended to the upper palace chamber for the Uposatha. There appears to him the divine wheel treasure with its thousand spokes, its tire and its nave, complete in every aspect. 
On seeing it, the head anointed noble king thinks thus. Now it has been heard by me that when a head anointed noble king has bathed his head on the Uposatha day of the 15th and has ascended to the upper palace chamber for the Uposatha, and there appears to him the divine wheel treasure with its thousand spokes, its tire and its nave, complete in every aspect, then that king becomes a wheel-turning monarch. Am I then a wheel-turning monarch? Then the head-anointed noble king rises from his seat and taking a, a water vessel in his left hand, he sprinkles the wheel treasure with his right hand, saying, Turn forward, good wheel treasure. Triumph, good wheel treasure. Then the wheel treasure turns forward, rolling in the east direction, and the wheel-turning monarch follows it with his four constituent army. Now, in whatever region the wheel-turning treasure pauses, there the wheel-turning monarch takes up his abode with his four constituent army. And opposing kings in the east come to the wheel-turning monarch and speak to him. Come, great king, welcome, great king. Command, great king, advise, great king. The wheel-turning monarch speaks thus. You should not destroy life. You should not take what has not been given. You should not engage in sexual misconduct. You should not speak falsehood. You should not drink intoxicants. You should enjoy your accustomed enjoyments. And the opposing kings in the East submit to the wheel-turning monarch. Then the wheel treasure plunges into the Eastern Ocean and emerges again. And then it turns forward, rolling in the Southern direction. And the opposing kings in the south submit to the wheel-turning monarch. Then the wheel treasure plunges into the southern ocean and emerges again. And then it turns forward, rolling in the western direction. And the opposing kings in the west submit to the wheel-turning monarch. Then the wheel treasure plunges into the western ocean and emerges again, and then it turns forward, rolling in the northern direction. And the opposing kings in the north submit to the wheel-turning monarch. Now, when the wheel treasure has triumphed over the earth to the ocean's edge, it returns to the royal capital and remains as if fixed on its axle at the gate of the wheel-turning monarch's inner palace as an adornment to the gate of his inner palace. Such is a wheel treasure that appears to a wheel-turning monarch. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> no more wars. Wherever you go, they say, please, we are welcome to our kingdom. Tell us what to do. Be our ruler. Yeah. In a way, this is what happens, I think, when, when, when people migrate, you know, like Sri Lankans voluntarily migrate to, the, to Australia, to the UK, wherever they're saying, please, be my monarch. <laughs> Uh, be my ruler, tell me what to do. I don't, you know, I trust you as my leader. In a way, that's what, that's what, what, what migrants, hopefully, um, do when they choose a new monarch. Anyway, let's start with Reka. 
Rika, may I ask you to unmute, please? Um, I just had a question. Um, there was, um, after the the precepts, basically, mm. um, there was something about enjoy your accustomed enjoyments, I think, is what mm. it said. What, like what's that referring to? I'm just a bit yeah. thrown off by the wording. You should enjoy your accustomed enjoyments. Oh, accustomed. Oh, accustomed oh, enjoyment. Okay. I think it's just... Um, uh, you know, enjoy the sensual pleasures in the way appropriate to your society. So, for example, enjoying the company of your family, going out for a picnic, if that's what is uh, the accustomed enjoyments of your, your um, culture. Um, in I guess in different countries, it would be different. What is uh, the sensual pleasures of... Uh, I don't know, Aboriginal people, a person 500 years ago would be different to the accustomed enjoyments of a young 18-year-old in Australia nowadays. I'm uh, So whatever it is, that is, um, I would say, the sensual, uh, sensual this is what I, I'm assuming, the sensual pleasure that is just uh, correct for your society. I think, does that make sense? So, so is this referring sort of to the same thing that the Buddha said about keeping your traditions and things like that, or is it more to do? With... Yeah, I think this is yeah traditions and accustomed enjoyment is specifically sounds like at the sensual world. So, yeah, in... so that's partly why I was confused about it because mm. why would why would he sort of see that as a positive thing for a ruler to do i mean well, uh, because we live at the, in the sensual world we're not all going to go into jhana planes straight away you know just because we want to so um the sensual world is to be enjoyed this is about living in the this is about living in the world in a appropriate and measured way so ultimate i mean real happiness does come from being out of the sense world but in the meanwhile you know eh, um go enjoy a nice picnic meeting with having dinner with your family it's uh, the sort of not un not not um, gross disgusting sensual pleasures that that some people get up to does right. that i think make sense? I I guess so. I think I'm just a little bit surprised because yeah, especially okay. as it came like after the, was it the yeah. five precepts? Yes, or, yes, or, yes. Yeah, it, yeah, it's just surprising that that was sort of added right. at the end because usually right. you don't really yeah, hear just, yes, the Buddha right, sort of encouraging right. you're right, that you're sort right. of thing. So yeah. that's why I was yeah a little bit yeah. confused like to about the Pali, why the, the Pali was. But he does speak about, you know, the... um. Uh, the happiness of the of this world the happiness right. that can be found in this world sure i mean it's not permanent it's not it's not the, going to last but there is there is pleasure sure yeah thank you i'll, I'll look up the pali just out yeah. of curiosity as well okay who was next i think well chi maybe chi chi uh, chi may I ask you to please Yes, oh, it's, uh, yeah, that's what I, I was, uh, you know, reflecting on the Sultanic monarch, and I was thinking actually answered my earlier question. Uh, he probably, if he, if he is there or if he was there, he was a person without too much doubts. <laughs> you know, he didn't probably waver. Is this little thing going to help anybody? Will it or will it not? He was probably quite an optimist, you know. Uh, he would probably think of all the small possibilities from this small good action. Uh, if I uh, vote, maybe you would think like if I vote, maybe uh, inspire someone else to vote. Uh, maybe someone saw how energetic I was as I was voting. So I... I just reflecting on how I imagine that we would turning Mona could be someone without doubt and very optimistic uh, and just thinks of the possibilities of all the small good things, the little possibilities that might come from it. Yeah. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Lee. Lee, may I ask you Amut, please? I th thank you. Um, I was thinking for me, as, as I was listening carefully, mm. I was thinking about how, uh, bearing in mind with the wheel turning monarch, I'm aware that there is the, I checked a bit earlier about the wheel turning monarch being a, a sort of trope or idiom or a, a, an idea that was in that period. But I also like the Buddha as the wheel turner, you know, turning of the wheel of the Dharma. Mm. And I just wonder whether or not actually in the suit of the Buddha is playing with, not playing in a bad way, but a good way with those two yeah. conceptions. Probably, so, probably. Because he's, yeah. he's pretty smart, the Buddha, and I think he had a bit of a sense of humour and the lightness. I do think that, you know. And I think also, so he's like, yeah, this is a conception of a wheel-turning monarch that could be, so they can run at the same time, you know. As you read the sutta, I wonder, I, I can't read Pali, but I wonder if somebody proficient in Pali could read the sutta as both running at the mm. same time, the conception of mm. what an idealised monarch might function right. like inside that. Right. But also, what would it mean if a person had discovered the Dharma, either directly or the sense in which we can become wheel-turning monarchs? So then this section of the, the, the sutta, I was thinking... He's talking about an appositor day, isn't he? Or we're taken as the appositor day, a moon day. Uh, yeah. And that's a day when hopefully people, I mean, we should ideally all be practising really well all the time. But on an appositor day, you can practise a bit more diligently, say. And, and on that day, you might go into the sort of upper tier of your palace or your mind, and then you might really realise the Dharma a bit more. Wow. And in, and in those times, you might, those four directions, they might be the, a Brahma Viharas, say. Mm. And then the, the oppositional right. kings might be, say, the, the things that are averse to that particular. So, like, you can think of each of the uh, Brahma Viharas as having an oppositional view, you know, so, like, the opposition of loving kindness might be sort of hatred or real will or, you know, that sort of thing. And so when when you meet, once you've realised it through the oppositional, through the meditation, through the through the Dharma and that, as you face it, you can quell in yourself each of those oppositional ones, you know, what comes in the four directions. So any kind of averse thoughts we can quell. So I, I think that the Buddha is sort of encouraging us to become wheel-turning monarchs in our own lives, mm. you know, through practising well. Mm. That's what I think he's doing, but yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure. <laughs> that's, my, that's, that's, that's how it strikes me. Oh, yes, that is very clever. <laughs> you could like write your own parallel. <gasps> I, you know, I think that is what happened over time. People had like, oh, that's a good idea. Let's put that into the suttas as well. And then you, uh, after a while, it becomes part, just... <laughs> gets embedded in there and people forget that someone had that or someone else had that brilliant idea and that's how the sutras get elaborated. But anyway, brilliant idea. Rekha. Rekha, may I ask you Ramu, please? Yes, yeah, so I just looked up the phrase that I was asking about mm. um, in the meantime. So in Pali, it says, Yatha puttancha punjatati. Ah, bunjanta. Eating, eat, so like eat, enjoy eating food. or enjoying the 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 accustomed food, oh, I guess. Yasabuta. Okay, but then um, the English translation that um, that I first found, which is um, uh, Venerable Sujato's translation, mm -hmm. translated that as maintain the current level of taxation. Oh, so I'm not sure if oh. maybe there was some kind of a cultural reference there that Unjanta. somehow he was aware of, but maybe yes, 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 he does. Another have... translator wasn't, or Bikabodi wasn't. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure what that's yeah. referring to, but <laughs> that's a completely different, <laughs> completely yeah. different interpretation. Interesting, interesting. Yes, so it he... could be something, something that other translators have missed. Yeah, yeah. very different. Yeah. True, 
true he come he 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 does research a lot before uh you know other users in other texts of that time how that word was used in like jain texts or um the upanishads and um uh yeah retranslates words so yeah maybe it meant taxation anyway we have kind of come close to the end of the session <laughs> uh we have 7 minutes to go 7 minutes to go does anyone have anything else to add before we finish off or uh any final comments any final reflections yes benjamin benjamin didn't have anything to say he usually has something wise to to summarize he has some nice uh, thing in the chat oh right oh man sorry i've completely ignored the chat all right ah um to shell you need to read it came from him ah the wheel turning monarch refers to the wheel of the dhamma well yeah the wheel of the dhamma is probably the buddha taking that um mythical character of the wheel turning monarch and and using his teachings as being turning the wheel of the dhamma just as a wheel turning monarch turns gets his gets his treasure so yes the buddha it's not the same the wheel of the dhamma but he's definitely definitely using that same analogy the sutta is that on effacement is very helpful the sutta on effacement is so useful we can only do our best to act skillfully whatever others do this can be a real refuge but we can still be activists if we are called to be so and as venu said every small action helps someone uh um I think we should also remember who the Buddha was talking to in this sutta. He says the Dhamma is the consort. I think this wheel-turning monarch is not just an idealized secular ruler, but the Buddha. The protection would be the following of Dhamma. It follows the teaching properly. Then any human who is hostile cannot harm us. I don't think it's possible for a secular leader to protect people in the same way. True. I thought the same when I realized it <laughs> realized it hadn't watered. <laughs> That's what one asks too. <laughs> oh, here's Benjamin's reflections. Reflecting on some small good actions, I often reflect on as much, reflect on and am much encouraged by Emily Dixon's poem. If I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life the aching or cool one pain. or help one fainting robin unto his nest again i shall not live in vain sad 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 i think we will end on that beautiful note cuz uh well, it is um 756 thank you everybody and thank you sharing. very much venerable for you as well yeah um, it was <clears throat> such a rich discussion today and uh, i'm sure everybody will agree with me and um, so today is the discussion and all these um what the anukampa is um mm. uh, providing are uh, all of her don- general, ge- donation basis in the spirit of generosity and um so this is a practice for us to uh, pract- this is an opportunity for us to practice generosity as well as um create this lovely community to come here and discuss and uh, not much of um spaces like this and uh, also um you know that we've got this new monastery now and uh, mm. so we would uh, if you would like to support the new monastery through the sangha's requisite you are invited to donate you send the link uh, below uh, sure just um and if you can do standing orders that is um very much appreciated as well that 
because we like to have a kind of a um, stability. And mm -hmm. if you want to get more involved in different ways, there are so many other ways to get involved. You can give a dana, food dana, or if you are far away, you can organize it remotely. You can do a supermarket delivery remotely. You can uh, contact team at Anukampa Project Org if you want to get more involved. And there are so many other activities, uh, events that is happening. Yeah. So please go to Anukampa Project uh, website and the event page um, and see how you can get involved um, and uh, make this community uh, richer and uh, better. And uh, such as we had this, you know, uh, in this discussion. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you, Manori. And may I add that this on the 19th of May, we are going to have a VESAC program online from 4 to 6 p.m. We'll send the details. So just put that on your calendar. It'll come out in the newsletter in a couple of days. And also on uh, the 2nd of June, we plan to have like a open retreat day at the monastery again it will be on the newsletter it will be in the afternoon from like two two to six that you can come and meditate with us on the second of june but when Bulchanda also has a day retreat in oxford coming up on the 11th and one in bristol coming up um i can't remember but that is yeah 18th 18th okay thank I you think, 18th of may thank you very much yeah 11 18th of uh 18th. And june is very busy isn't it uh yes uh, uh, june has ajan ramali yes uh coming there are several talks one day uh retreat in uh oxford and then there is an online um uh retreat uh ajan ram, ram and virabha chanda mm. as well yeah, so please tell your friends about it. Print out our posters and put it on the your notice boards because we there's not many there's lots of places still for Ajahn Brahmali's retreat and talks. So, yeah, Ajahn Brahmali is not known that much, so it is good yeah. if you can get the word and yes. uh, maybe copy the uh, posters from the Facebook or somewhere and uh, post the it, website. You know, you know send the it website, to yeah. your friends that who are interested in. Yes, yes. Spread the good word. <laughs> all right, Sadhu. Thank you, everybody, for contributing. It is all I always learn something. And um, yeah, see you tomorrow. Venerable Chanda will be. Uh, conducting the metta set session at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. So, see you then. <laughs>